Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Housefrau. If you are new to my channel, that is because this is a brand new channel on YouTube. I have my main channel, Park Rose Permaculture, which obviously I will link to, in which I talk about uh, growing food in a way that is caring for the planet and caring for people. So that channel focuses much more on sustainable agriculture on the home scale, as well as duck keeping and chicken keeping and beekeeping in a way that is in alignment with the principles of permaculture, which are earth care, people care, and fair share. So this channel is an adjacent channel that I created because I get so many requests on my main channel to cover traditional homemaking and homesteading skills. They didn't quite tie into that channel, so I thought let's make a separate space to discuss those things. These are all skills that you can use in permaculture. They're all skills that are really uh, handy in the pursuit of a sustainable way of living, but they aren't exactly permaculture. So the reason that I named this channel Park Rose Housefrau is that um, I live in the Park Rose neighborhood in Portland, Oregon. I'm really committed to placemaking and supporting my local community. I love my neighborhood. We've been here 13 years. And um, Housefrau because really I am a homemaker and uh, of German descent and my primary goals in life, my primary areas of focus are homeschooling my four children, we're actually unschoolers, and growing food and living a life that is um, detached from our consumer society, independent of our consumer society as much as possible, and focuses on community care. So this is a channel that I want to focus on those traditional homemaking, homesteading skills that have been such an important part of my life um, as a homemaker with more than 20 years experience and as somebody who was raised by a professional homemaker I have a lot of skills that I'm really excited to share with y'all and I want to get to this really long list on my phone I keep of all the requests for video topics that don't quite fit into my permaculture channel. So today I want to talk about um, how to process a raw fleece. Now, I have been a spinner and a knitter and a weaver for a long time. I actually learned how to knit in college. Um, shout out to my friend Kathy, who taught me in a dorm kitchen one evening, and um, we went on to teach knitting classes together. She didn't know she was going to change the course of my life. I am a diehard knitter. But I'm really uh, heavily invested in sustainable fashion, sustainable fiber production. So I'm really picky and choosy about where I get my fiber, and that led to me becoming a spinner. About 15 years ago, we moved to the central Oregon coast where the um, Yaquinnup Fiber Arts Guild took me in and taught me how to spin, first on a drop spindle and then on a wheel. After that, I became a weaver. And I have a lot of friends and friends of friends who have alpaca and who have sheep and folks find out you're a spinner and a weaver and they just gift you fleeces. Sometimes of mixed quality, sometimes they're such poor quality that all I can use them for is mulch around my pumpkin plants but sometimes they are exceptional quality. And so uh, I have learned how to wash and process a raw fleece, which is a tremendous gift, but requires a lot of work to get it to a place where you can knit with it. So I thought, let me talk about the couple of steps that it takes to take a raw, stinky, lanolin soaked fleece and turn it into a product that I can then spin on my spinning wheel and then into yarn, which I can knit into a garment for myself or my family. Now, today I am going to be opening up a bag of South Down Baby Doll Sheep wool. Totally raw, it smells like a sheep. When I put it in the back of my car, it was like I had loaded a flock of sheep into the back of my minivan. And I'm gonna be taking this fleece and I'm going to be skirting it. I have not opened this bag. I don't know what the quality of this fleece is. We'll see when we get in there. But skirting is the process by which you remove all of the dirt and poop and short second cut fibers that are not good for spinning and you compost those. Sheep wool is really easy to compost. It is a great source of nitrogen and um, is also really good at putting in your garden beds to hold in moisture. So don't throw away any of those off cuts or poopy bits or really dirty bits. If you are skirting a fleece, you can totally compost them. Natural materials should always be returned to the earth. So I was given this fleece by a friend of a friend 
named Lee and I actually got to meet Lee and work with her. She's a distiller at Freeland Spirits here in Portland and is also a fellow beekeeper. I will link to her Instagram. She has um, some really cool honey products, so you should check her out. Um, so I'm going to be processing this today. We're gonna go over skirting and then in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to wash wool. And then in the video after that, we will talk about combing and carding although those may be two separate videos, eventually spinning, eventually knitting with the yarn and then wearing the final garment. So this will be a series and we'll work up to the end. Um, so I'm really excited about this process. Alrighty, so my neighbor's air conditioner has started up because it is 99 degrees today in Portland. In fact, when you have a heat wave and bright sunshine, that's the best time to think about washing your fleeces because um, they need to dry relatively quickly in a sunny spot. And for me, if I wash a fleece and I can stick it on my drying rack or drying baskets in the sunshine, it dries within a day and uh, then I can get to the next step in processing the fiber. So let's go ahead and open up this fleece and see what it looks like. So keep in mind when you are purchasing or gifted a raw fleece, it's going to smell very sheepy and it's going to be full of all of the things the sheep encountered when it was out on the pasture. So it will have bits of dirt, maybe rocks, lots of vegetative matter. There'll be poop on it and there'll be lots and lots of lanolin. If you have a gray fleece, in my experience, gray fleeces tend to have a gradation of color that often has some brown in it and varying shades of gray. And that's one of the things I really love about spinning natural wool, undyed wool, particularly gray fleeces, is there is some amount of variegation to the fleece and it makes for such a lovely soft tonal effect in the final knitted garment. So while I really like to dye yarn, I like to knit and weave with brightly colored yarns. I kind of have a big soft spot for the natural fleeces, particularly gray fleeces. There's just something different about working with a fiber that has been minimally processed and has its natural color and the natural subtle variations. I really love drafting yarn, watching the fiber get pulled into the yarn as I spin it and seeing that subtle color change along the way. So for me, a gray fleece has got to be my favorite kind of fleece to process. Now, again, I don't know what this looks like, we're gonna find out, but it's a gray as you can see. So when you look at a fleece, when you take it out, of the bag, it's gonna be sticky and that's from all of the lanolin. And we'll get to a video on washing later. I often like to spin in the raw, um, is particularly for socks or other outerwear garments. But for this fleece, we're gonna be washing it and removing all of the excess lanolin. Because this is what will fit on my table, I'm going to be taking out half the fleece to begin with. Now, Woo, it is sheepy. I don't actually mind the smell of sheep. I think that uh, if I had my druthers, I would definitely be somebody who kept sheep, but I can't keep them on a quarter acre. So you wanna look over the fleece, and the first thing you wanna do is remove any bits that have a lot of sheep poop on them, and really matted sections, and sections that have tons and tons of vegetable matter that you can't pick out. Like, this is fine. This is not too dirty here. All of these little bits, I'll pick those out. And some of those will come out with the combing. But particularly areas that are around the back end of the sheep that are poopy, you wanna get rid of those. So I have these containers from the dollar store. Mad props to all of the other um, spinners out there who process raw fiber. Um, get some baskets at the dollar store and they're really great for washing and for separating your fleeces. They didn't have any with holes on the bottom so my partner drilled holes into the bottom of this so the water can drain out. But for now I'm just going to be separating this out. Now don't, you can wear gloves if you want. I love the way lanolin softens my hands and I don't mind some sheep poop. Like I've got ducks and chickens and like I don't, it, this is just digested grass. It doesn't bother me. So also you wanna remove any of the pieces that are really, really dirty, but any of the pieces that are kind of seconds where the shear had to come by for a second pass to get little bits off. And there are little short bits of fiber that will create kind of itchy patches um, in the wool. If you want the finished yarn to have fewer of those short little hairs sticking out, you wanna go through and make sure you get any of the little seconds. This is what I mean by a second. 
So this is a little off cut where the shearer had to take a second pass and there are these little tiny short fibers. They cause pilling on your garment in the end and they make for little itchy patches. Here's another one. See, this is the side that was the outside of the sheep that was subjected to the weather. This is the underside, nice and fluffy and lofty. This is the side with all the lanolin on it and as you handle it, this is the side that gets your hands all waxy feeling. You can also look for pieces that are particularly matted and fold. Here's another little short, short off cut. It may seem like if you've never done this before that you can't imagine how this is going to turn into beautiful soft yarn, but it will. We'll get to the part where we scour it in the next video and I'll be taking off all of the excess lanolin and it will be a much softer product that will be easy to process and spin. So it can be really hard when you've paid good money for a fleece to say, oh God, I don't wanna get rid of all of this matted stuff at the back end that's covered in poop and really, really full of vegetable matter. It's okay, I promise you, just compost it in the garden. You really want a nice finished product if you're investing in a good fleece. And so it's totally okay to get rid of the parts that will have a negative impact on the finished quality. As long as you're returning them to the earth, you don't have to feel guilty about it and it's not a waste and you'll end up with a nicer yarn at the end. So folks asked me how I got into um, spinning and knitting and fiber arts in the first place. And I've always been really, really interested in traditional homemaking skills. Now, obviously my passion is plants. My main channel is about growing food and sustainable agriculture. But at the same time, I'm really interested in pursuing all avenues for living a more sustainably and ecologically conscious life. And that sort of lends itself to taking on traditional domestic skills. This is an example of a piece you don't wanna keep. Covered in poop, really, really matted with grass. As you're skirting, you can kind of pick out any of the bigger chunks of vegetable matter. Some of that will wash out. Some of it will come out with combing or carding. But as long as you're here picking at things, you might as well get the really big pieces. So here's my finished skirted fleece. And here is my wastage, which is not really wastage, it is going into the compost. So I've not worked with South Down Baby Doll before, and you will notice that the fiber has a really short staple to it. I'm interested to see how this handles when I go to spin it. I've never spun something with this short of a staple before, but it is an ancient traditional fiber breed. So thank you for watching today. I will be back tomorrow to talk about how to wash a fleece to get it ready for combing or carding and spinning and turning into yarn. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my main channel, Parkos Permaculture. I would love to hear in the comments suggestions for future topics you would love to see covered related to traditional skilled homemaking and homesteading. I also have a Patreon. You can check it out in the description below. Thanks.